Okay, go. Okay, I'm going to make another attempt to, to lash the spring on to the um, woven uh, deck. I want to sh before I do that, though, I want to show you a modern product. It's been around for about 75 years. It's a very handy product as far as lashing springs to a woven deck. They're little prongs in a gun. I have a handle here that I'm going to just push it, and you can watch how it forces these prongs outward. Can you see that? Yes. And then it pushes it completely off. And that's what you're seeing here on the uh, deck. Now I've cheated a little bit because this is not what someone was able to do and upholster was able to do back in the 1870s or 1880s. They were having to either position them by hand and then, and then lash them or find some other strategy to pin them. So I've, I've cheated a little bit and just set these, but I don't want to leave them in because it's not, it's not traditional upholstery. And um, so it I, gives me the opportunity to just keep the springs in position while I'm able to do a traditional hand lash. And you also don't use this uh, in conservation when you have old webbing and you are doing I, a museum piece. That is absolutely correct. This is only for restoration. So I have my, um, my um, needle already pulled through and we'll catch the back side in a moment. But you can see I'm pulling the string through and I'm going to go on the other side of the orbit and I'm going to push it back to the other side and then I'll recreate a, um, a um, slip knot and hold the... Um, okay, we're coming out. around. Okay. okay, you're seeing the back side. And I'm doing these, this one exactly the way I've done the other courses of springs, what you're seeing up above. I'm going to create a slip knot second second loop just to make sure it doesn't slip off or it doesn't back itself off and I'm going to tighten it down. Okay, this is where we got into trouble before. We're not showing that so you don't need to keep referring to it. I'm going to. That's the video we dumped. We're doing a new video now. Oh, I don't know about that. I think that, that students can learn by mistakes. Okay. So then we'll gain them happens. together. When you don't pay attention Okay, I'm coming around again. Okay. Sorry for the blur, guys. There you go. I've already pulled the string through. And this time we're avoiding... Avoiding having it pulled through the orbit and pulling the spring down. That's for later. Okay, there we go. It's okay. coming back through. Coming back around again. And now I'm going to create... Once around counterclockwise, once around clockwise, and pull my thread through. And this is wax thread, by the way, so it gives a little tension going back the other direction to where it can't slip off. Okay, so now that is tight around the orbit. Now I'm going to create a number four configuration, so I'm coming over to the west side of the orbit. This time I want I won't come around. No, there's no reason to. And by the way, I'm what I'm tr hunting for is to go through two courses of webbing at one time so that I have additional strength for these knots. So I'm avoiding sections, making sure that my intersecting points for these orbits are in a position where where there is um, at least two layers of, of uh, webbing. Okay, pull it through, and then come back. Counterclockwise, clockwise. Now, if you go two or two two trips around, it just makes for a, a, a much more thick knot. Uh, and it can be successfully employed if you need bulk. But <coughs> the drawback doing this is that you may bulk up so much that it resists knotting. And so you end up with a little loop uh, or a failure like what we'd see right over here. 
and so that had to be tied off in such a way where it wouldn't slip back out. But that's that's the 